Planning out objects where there's clearly perspective can be challenging. Does it involve lots of free transforming and other things? Well, let's find out. You're in the right place here in the Work Smarter Not Harder Dojo with me, Tony Harmer, aka The Design Ninja. Right, so here we are in Photoshop and this tree trunk here is somewhat distracting and I'd like to get rid of it. But how to do? Well, here's the thing. This actually goes right the way back to Photoshop CS2. Wow, long, long time. But it's one of those techniques, because it's so old, it's overlooked, but it's still nonetheless valid. And we're going to look at one straightforward way of using it and one slightly more advanced way of using it. So to access this, and of course, in order to be non-destructive, what I'm going to do is create a brand new layer here in the stack because we can put all of our edits on that. And then I'll go up to the filter menu and come down to vanishing point. And the vanishing point dialog opens like so. You can zoom in using command or control plus and zoom out using command or control minus. And you can use the space bar to access the hand tool to move around, although those tools are also available on the left hand side. Now the default tool here is the perspective plane tool and you can actually possibly just see that small icon just there, but here it is at the top of the toolbox. And what you need to do is to give Photoshop a bit of a steer on where the perspective is. Now here it's really easy with these lines. So I'm simply going to start down at the back here and click. And then I'm going to move up this line of planking just here and click. I'll go across to the side here, basically place all of these different points. Now I'm going to place this one like so, because I want you to see what happens. When it goes red, that means Photoshop doesn't understand the plane, right? That it doesn't look right. So you need to move it. Now, sometimes it will also go yellow, which means it's got slightly more of an idea, right? But it's still not exactly right. But what you're looking for is blue and for these small grid lines to appear like so, because that way Photoshop does know where the plane is. Now, mine's still not right. So I need to just tweak that around just a little bit until I get it. Somewhere around about there, I think, is good. And then I can go ahead and manipulate the plane. So what I could do is, for example, stretch that out just a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and give that a bit more room there. There you saw the yellow plane thing going on. So let's get that going to about there. And it does take a little bit of manipulating sometimes, in all honesty. There we go. Perfect. Once I've got that, what I can do is I can go ahead and select the clone stamp tool. So I've got that and then you'd use it in the normal way. So for example, I'm just going to travel down the line here and then I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key okay, and click to create a sample. Now, the more accurate you are with doing that, the better a result you're going to get. Now I'm going to bring this up. You can see my brush here is quite large. And I'll bring this into this region here. And again, accuracy is so much better than speed. And now I can just go ahead and brush just there. Now, if I carried on brushing, okay, like so, that should work pretty good. But what I tend to do is do it in small hits. So I get the things lined up so that there's no obvious patterning in the texture and then I go ahead and make edits closer to it like so. Right, so I'm just gonna grab just another point here and then just line that up. And eventually, with just a tiny bit of patience, you should get, I'll just undo that because I've gone into the pillar just here, you should get a result that you're happy with. You can use the bracket key, so the left bracket to make the uh, brush size smaller, the right bracket to make it larger which is a good idea. It's a big mistake, I think, to try and do it all in one go. And here I need to make an adjustment. And there we are. Once you've done that, you could go ahead and fix that really quickly. If you then tap OK, you'll see that now your edit is on another layer. 
so you can see everything. Now, there is some other adjustment to be made there because of the shadow, but that's something that I could work with quite easily. The main thing is, is that the tree trunk has gone. In this image, what I've got is some trash just laying on the street that I'd like to get rid of. So again, I'm going to use vanishing point. So I'll add a new layer. This time I'm going to use the shortcut shift option command or shift alt control N to quickly create a new layer. And then up to the filter menu and down to vanishing point. Now there's a plane here from an earlier version. So what I'm going to do is just hit delete to get rid of that plane. And then I'll come along here and click at the bottom corner of that building. I'll try and go across the street here to this corner. Now this road is actually a little bit wonky. So you've got to eyeball it. But the things I'm looking for will be this line along here, along the bottom of the building. So that's the thing I'm going to try and anchor properly. Now, at the moment, that seems to be a valid plane as far as Photoshop is concerned. So I'm going to leave it at that. But now I want a second plane going up the building here. First of all, actually, I do think I might try and just extend this out, just using that middle handle there, so that I've got it for this piece of trash too. I'm then going to hold down the command key here and go to the middle of this plane and then drag upwards. And that creates me a perpendicular plane. So in 3D space, it's at 90 degrees to the ground plane, but you can see it's going off in another direction. But I can then use the Option or Alt key to move the plane around and get it conforming to the space that I'm actually seeing. Now, technically, it would probably be something like that, but I'm going to use the building here as a steer. You can see I'm using that left edge just there, down the bottom, or right edge, depending on how you're looking at it. But that works pretty well for me at the minute. The proof, of course, is in the pudding. So I'm going to zoom in and then just navigate across here and then tap S, just as I would inside of Photoshop, and now make a sample to paint away this trash. Well, let's go with the easy bit first, this bit just on the floor here. And I hold down the Option key and click for a sample. Now I'm just going to move out into another area here so I can visualize my brush and resize it, perhaps a bit too big, and just go across here like so. There we are, that bit's sorted. Now I'll move to the edge here. I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key again and click. Then I can line up the parts of the building to work with. That's pretty good just there. Of course, I'm doing this completely live, so the chances are, while I'm talking, <laughs> that I might make the odd mistake here and there, go back, make a new sample, and then just line that up like so, and paint out that section as well. Of course, there's nothing to stop you doing a little bit of secondary healing if you need to afterwards. All of the tools are there and at your disposal. Okay, I did a really bad sample just there. But the thing is, is that you're getting most of the work done without having to collect something and then free transform it. Let's just paint that bit in there, move up the wall a little bit. Now that's where that's going a little bit wrong. So I'll go to the wall just here, hold down the option key and create a sample. And I can come across and paint this small section first. There we go, like that. And I need to get this sample just here. That's too far up. So let's get a much, much smaller brush. Okay, and this is where we get into the area of just dabbing things in. Now my sample's not great there, so I'll just change it and then just come down and dab that in. And again, like any other cloning procedure, it is going to take some of that. So it's going to be doing the big parts first and then dabbing in to remove any patterning that might occur and such like. I'll just hit OK. And there we are. So I can turn off that layer. You can see how it was before with that piece of trash and turn it back on to see the after. Now already I can see a couple of little bits in there that do need some attention. There's just a little bit of patterning going on just there and some 
incorrect shading and shadow from the trash bag that I need to deal with. But I could do that quite easily because the vanishing point is actually preserved inside of the file, nor did I get this piece just here. So if I go back to filter and vanishing point, you'll see that everything is still there. So if I just go ahead and get my stamp tool, for example, and make my sample, I can then come out. I think I'll go for a slightly bigger brush just there and brush that in just like so to heal that. And then I could go across and do the other side. So there you are. You can see that that's preserved for you. So if you do spot a mistake, nice and easy to do. And that's it for now. Please do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time here in the Work Smarter, Not Harder Dojo. See ya.